So in this question, we're shown figure two, which we can see here. And it's a sketch of the graph with the equation y is equal to 2 multiplied by the absolute value of x plus 4, and we subtract 5 from that. And what we're asked to do in this question is we're to find the coordinates of p. So we can see we have p here, which uh, almost looks as if it's our turning point, and it's safe to say it is our turning point. So just note that down. We have that p is our turning point. So we can read the turning point from the equation. So to do this, we swap the sign of the term next to the x, and then the remaining term is our y coordinate. So we therefore have the x is equal to negative 4. And additionally, we have that y is equal to negative 5. So therefore, we can say that the coordinates of p are negative 4 and negative 5. There is two marks available here, and we receive our first mark for getting either the x or the y coordinate. So we had our x coordinate first, so we'll give ourselves our first mark here, and we receive our second mark for having the correct final answer. So in this part of the question, we're asked to solve the equation 3x plus 40 is equal to two lots of the absolute value of x plus 4, and then we subtract 5. So we're going to have two options here, depending on the absolute value. So we'll start off with option one, and it's going to be that we have 3x plus 40 is equal to two lots of x plus 4, and then we subtract 5. So this is where we essentially have the positive part of the absolute value. And just sorting this equation out here, we'll tidy it up and solve for x. So we'll have on this side 2x, and then we'll have 2 multiplied by 4, which is 8. And we take away 5 from that, which leaves us with positive 3. And therefore, this is going to leave us with subtracting 2x from both sides. We're going to have the x is going to be equal to, and we'll have 3, and we take away 40 from that, is equal to negative 37. So then to check if this solution is valid, we're going to substitute it back into our original equation here. So therefore, we have 3 lots of negative 37. And we're going to add 40 to that. And that should be equal to 2 lots of the absolute value of negative 37. Then we're going to add on 4 to that. And then we subtract 5. So we put this into our calculator. And we have that this gives that negative 71 is equal to 61. But we see that that is not true. So therefore, from this, we can conclude that x equals negative 37 is not a valid solution. So then we're going to now take a look at option 2, and that is the case where we have that 3x plus 40 is going to be equal to negative 2 lots of x plus 4, and we subtract 5 from that. So then tidying this up, we're going to have that 3x plus 40 is going to be equal to negative 2x, negative 8, and we subtract 5 from that. And tidying this up, we add 2x to both sides, so we have that 5x is going to be equal to, so we have negative 13, and we subtract 40 from that, which gives us negative 53. And then we divide negative 53 by 5, which gives us negative 10.6. So then we therefore, we check the solution, and we're looking to see if it's going to be valid. And for x equals negative 10.6, we have substituting into this equation again, just like we did here. We have that 41 over 5 is equal to 41 over 5. We therefore conclude that the solution is x is equal to negative 10.6. And therefore, we've completed this question. And we'll now take a look at where we picked up our marks. So we pick up our first mark for attempting to solve the equation and reaching a value for x. So we receive this point here. And then we receive our second and final mark for concluding that this was a correct solution. And that's us completing this part of the question. So in part C of this question, we're now told some further information. We're told that a line L has the equation y is equal to a of x where a is a constant. And we're told that L intersects our original equation, which is y is equal to 2 multiplied by the absolute value of x plus 4, 
negative 5 at least once. And what we're asked to do is to find a range of possible values of a and we're to write our answer in set notation. So we know we're going to have a line which at times will intersect with our equations. For example, here it intersects twice and here it intersects once. And also, for example, here it will intersect once. Now we can see if we have a line here, we can see that it will not intersect. So we're now going to work out the points at which it intersects. So we need to have a think about when do we get a line which is going to be here. So we know that for y equals a of x, that is going to be a line through the origin which takes gradient of the value a. And we know that the gradient of this line here, which I'm highlighting, is going to be equal to 2, since we have a coefficient of 2 in front of our x term. So we know that when a equals 2, so for a equals 2, we're going to have a line that's going to be parallel to our point. So we'll draw on here, we're going to have a parallel line which passes through the origin, and we can see that that's never going to intersect. So for a equals 2, there will never be intersection. So therefore, if we increase this gradient, the line is going to become more vertical, and we see that there will be intersection. So we can therefore say, for a greater than 2, there will always be at least one point of intersection. And we need to think at what point does the line start to intersect when we go this way. So the point that this is going to be is going to be when we have something which intersects with the point P. So to find this, we're going to take y equals ax with point P, which we recall from the previous part of the question was negative 4, negative 5. So therefore we'll have that negative 5 is equal to negative 4a, and therefore we can see that a is going to be equal to 5 over 4, which is 1.25. So from here, this means that for a less than or equal to 1.25, there will be at least one point of intersection. So in writing this in set notation, we have that from negative infinity to 1.25 inclusive. So we have a square bracket here because it's 1.25 inclusive, and we don't include negative infinity in the interval, so we have a, an open interval like that. So we have that for that, and we know this is going to be in addition to for when we have a greater than 2. So that means that we can write this in, some, in set notation as the union of this with 2 all the way to infinity. And it's 2, but not inclusive of 2. So we have an open interval here. So we have a curly bracket like that. And therefore, we've written out the solution in set notation. So in this question, there was three marks available. We receive our first mark for making the point that a must be greater than 2. So we receive that here. We then receive our second mark for finding the part about a being less than or equal to 1.25. So we'll write that in here. And then we receive our third and final mark for writing about the set notation and having that answer correct. And therefore, we've completed this question.